The 13 Republican House members whose votes did help pass the trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill have received profanity laced messages and death threats from some conservative voters. So why the anger over the kind of bill, infrastructure, roads and bridges that normally produces bipartisan support? Because President Biden, who will sign the bill tomorrow, might benefit politically. That's why, at least that's what the former president fears. And that's where we're going to start this morning, with our increasingly dysfunctional Congress, dysfunctional politics, which is driving people to want to leave Washington or simply not run at all. An ugly time, a toxic time, and really unfortunate because it's not what, what we stand for as a democracy. This week's GOP-led backlash over the vote to fund roads, bridges, and broadband is just the latest, as a portion of the Republican Party sees threats of political violence as a legitimate part of their partisan struggle. We always have a difference of ideas, but these ideas should not be leading to violence. House Republicans who voted for the bill have been flooded with angry messages, called traitors, told to rotten hell, and delivered death threats like this one to Michigan Congressman Fred Upton. Traitor. That's what you are. You're a piece of traitor. I hope you die. I hope everybody in your family dies. It's a bill 19 Republican senators also voted for, including Senators Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell. I was delighted that the House finally found a way to pass the infrastructure bill last week. But on Monday night, at an official dinner raising money for House Republicans, former President Trump went on an angry tirade. No thank you goes to those in the House and Senate who voted for the Democrats' non-infrastructure bill, also known as the Democrat presidential re-election bill. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene posted the office phone numbers of the 13 House Republicans online. To say that a bill is right for your district, right for your state, and that something you helped write, but then you got to vote against it because you want to give the other side a victory, that is a sign of what's broken. Threats against members of Congress had doubled when last measured in May, according to the Capitol Police. Some of those threats are coming from inside the House. This week, Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar shared an animated video showing him killing New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and swinging swords at President Biden. And Republican leaders have been slow to condemn the attack on the Capitol, taking their cues from the former president. We're saying, Hang my because it's, it's common sense, John, it's common sense that you're supposed to protect. How can you, if you know a vote is fraudulent, right, yeah. how can you pass on a fraudulent vote to Congress? We are also confronting a domestic threat, aided by political leaders who have made themselves willing hostages to this dangerous and irrational man. Now many in the party are adopting former President Trump's violent language. From Republican leaders. I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. It'll be hard not to hit her with it, but I will back it down. To the conservative grassroots. A Reuters investigation documented nearly 800 intimidating messages to election officials in 12 states. Tell the truth or your three kids will be fatally shot. Let's be clear. This is domestic terrorism. 